In this video, we're going to take a look at uh, the Manly Stroker pistons, get some measurements on them, uh, also get the measurements from uh, the cylinder wall, and then we're going to mate our rods to our pistons. Uh, first, we're going to pull out our Manly uh, Stroker pistons, part number 595130C-8. And here's a look at the piston. Good quality, high quality. It also comes with some information on uh, piston the cylinder wall clearance. We'll talk a little bit more about that. It's got our wrist pins and our uh, C clips to hold the wrist pins in. Right, now we got our pistons out. Um, I'm gonna. All the pistons are facing the same direction, so all the arrows are pointed that direction. So from here on, this will be piston one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and that's how it's going to go in the engine. Those are the rods that it's going to connect to. Um, one of the things it tells us on here is where to measure from, where you're going to gauge to get the thickness of these. Every every set of these I've gauged, they're, they're all pretty much spot on because Manly does a very good job with their manufacturing process. Uh, but according to this, it's about uh, three quarters of an inch up from the bottom of the skirt, which is almost right on the Manly logo here. These pistons are designed for a 30 over bore, so a, a 3.583. So I have my micrometer set up uh, to around 3.583, and go ahead and measure these out. Okay, so I've taken the longer, one of the longer fittings uh, from the dial bore gauge kit and I put it in the dial bore gauge and I took the setting from uh, what the pistons, pistons were and I zeroed out my gauge. So now when I put it in between here, the gauge reads zero. And now we can take this, put it in the cylinder bore and it'll tell us what the clearance is for each cylinder. Now we can take our dial bore gauge and put it down in the cylinder rock it back and forth it's going to give us our clearance that is about four thousandths clearance right at four thousandths a little over so after measuring out the cylinder bore diameter they were all about four and a half thousandths number one number two where i put them down as uh 43 ten thousandths uh, because my bore gauge doesn't show ten thousandths, it just shows thousandths and half thousandths, and it was in between uh, the half thousand, almost to the half thousandths. So I put it down as uh, forty-three ten thousandths instead of forty-five ten thousandths. But the other ones were spot on at four, uh, four and a half thousandths, which is where I like to put these. Uh, m you know, m low boost, uh, NA or low boost, mid boost uh, application is about four and a half thousandths piston to cylinder wall clearance. I got the rods laid out in order, one, two, three, four, all the way to eight. And we got our pistons set up here. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna put number one rod with number one piston. And I like to orient them to where the number is facing out. So I'm gonna go ahead and here's my rod, here's my engine for reference, number facing out, piston, arrow pointing forward. It's gonna to go together like this. I'm gonna do that with one through four. I got one through four all done. I'm gonna do the same thing with five through eight. So now the number is gonna go on the opposite side. Now when you're done, you'll notice that one through four, all the pistons, the arrows are pointed up. Uh, one through four, the manly emblem is on the bottom and five through eight, the manly emblem is pointing up. Now I'm just gonna move these up so I have room to put the wrist pin and the C-clips in. Now I'm gonna start assembling the, the rod and piston together. So I've taken uh, one of the wrist pins out of the package. I got my C-clips over here. Uh, first, I'm gonna start off by putting some assembly lube on here. And then get it started down the piston, through the rod, These are the C-clips. Uh, they can be kind of difficult to get into the groove of this thing. 
Uh, I find that if I can't get it with my fingers, which uh, for the most part I can, uh, because it, uh, once you've done a few of them, you'll get you'll get it down. But uh, to start off with, you can use one of these mini screwdrivers. Uh, just be careful. You always want to keep something over the top of it, like your hands over the top of it, because if you get this thing halfway on there, it can shoot out and it could be difficult to find. So make sure as you're working this thing in there that uh, you're prepared for it to shoot out. There's a little groove in the piston. I'll try to get a close up on the on the backside when I do this. I get it started in that little groove cut there and then almost lost it and then just circle it around. And you hear it kind of clip in there. Now, you you got to be careful with using rubber gloves. I may end up taking them off because if you don't want to get them caught in there and, and take a piece of your rubber glove with it. So this, it's, it's in the groove on the top, but it's not all the way on the back side. If you get to that point, you can actually use the wrist pin to push it back up until it clicks into place. There, it clicked into place. Now that, that wrist, now that retaining pin is in there. Okay, so here's the back side of the, uh, the opposite side of the wrist pin. There's that little cutout in there. That's to aid in getting the C-clip out uh, if you have to get it out. So I like to leave the edge, like right in there. Here's the open end of it. I put that down in the groove as much as I can and then squeeze it together and push down at the same time. I'll try to use a screwdriver so you can see a little better. Once you hear that click, it clicks into place. You can see that the C-clip is in its groove and we're good. Now, if you may scratch the, this little top of the piston just a little bit, uh, pushing it down in there. Uh, that happens. Uh, I don't get bat wrapped around the axle. It's happened on uh, a few of my builds and uh, nothing that you don't, you're not gonna crack the piston or anything like that. So once they're in, that piston's good and only seven more to go. Now that all the pistons and rods are, are mated to each other, uh, one thing I really want to stress is to make sure that you get the C-clip down in the groove. I have seen engine failures due to uh, the C-clip or they used to have uh, spiral locks in these things. And there was two of them, you had to get both of them in there spiraled in. Uh, I had an engine come to me and uh, the customer brought a spiral lock and said, could this be part of the failure? Uh, and it was, came out of the oil pan, so uh, that will definitely cause an engine failure. Just make sure that you get all your C-clips seated uh, properly. They only come with the right amount that you need, so if you have one left over, go back and make sure you're not missing one. Uh, and if one shoots off, then you're going to have to find another, another one because they give you exactly enough to do eight pistons.